Hi everybody, Dr. Amanda here, and uh, my students this week are doing flowcharting. So I thought I'd update my flowchart video. I had a hand-drawn one before, but he will have a bit more of um, a screencast of going through our basic flowchart shapes. Now these aren't going to be exactly the same at every single firm, but from my experience at Coopers and Librand and at PwC, these were the sorts of shapes that we used to document our processes. So this isn't an exhaustive list of shapes, but these are the ones that are going to be most common and that my students are going to be uh, practicing and doing within their classwork. So let's get started. I'm going to start with some typical basic shapes uh, that should be fairly easily recognizable. Now our first shape here is going to be a document. Okay, so a document of some sort usually has uh, this shape that you see right here. Now that's usually just one document. What if you want to have a document that has a couple of different copies? Well then we draw something really similar. So we've got our document and then I just draw a number of layers behind that. So again we might have our order or our invoice, copy number one, copy number two. So that's how we do with multiple copies of documents. So how are documents produced? Usually documents come out of some sort of process. So the next one I'm going to show you is the standard rectangle. All right. And the standard rectangle normally does represent um, a process of some sort. So let's just give that a name. So that could be, um, it usually involves some sort of verb in the word. So process, a sale, order, uh, something like that. So the rectangle is some form of process. Now this process is normally a process on a computer. Um, so this is something that happens usually within some sort of database or computer system. So how do I recognize my databases or my computer systems? I use this little cylinder here. All right, so let me just give that a label, info system. So that could be any form of computer program or information system. So typically, things like processes require you to get data and put it into an information system or pull it out. All right, so we've got our document, um, our paper document, our computer process, our information system. Now what about uh, if I have to do something manually? If I have to do something manually, then I have a different sort of shape. And it is this one here. All right, so I'm going to write here manual operation. So that's something that we do just as a person. No computers involved, just that person. That could be something like a bank reconciliation um, would be an example of, um, a bank, of a manual operation. Now we might also have a situation where our documents up here get put into a file of some sort. So to recognize when things do get filed away, which is quite common within organizations, we use the upside down triangle. And so the upside down triangle represents something being filed. Now documents can be filed away in many different ways. So if I had a document, and let's say I'm gonna use my little group of documents here, and if they go into the file, if order one goes into the, copy one goes into the file, then I just put a little arrow, whoops, where's my pen, that say that it was filed. Now within filing, we can also have different notations. So A uh, represents alphabetical, all right. You might have C for chronological, which is by date, N for numeric. All right, so um, there's a number of different ways in which documents can be filed, alphabetical, chronological, or numeric. And to do that, all we would do is we would draw, again, the little shape, the triangle, and then have the A. And that would indicate that the document is filed uh, by alphabet. So we've got our document, we've got our process, our operation, um, our system. 
We also have instances where people have to make a decision. Uh, you have to decide whether to grant somebody credit or uh, not. Our decision is represented in our diamond shape. Let me do that again, that's not very good. Let's try take two. Here we go. Perhaps better. All right, I'm not going to win any art awards, unfortunately. So where someone has to make a decision about something, we use the little diamond. And typically with our decisions, you should have at least two choices. It might be a yes or a no, moving on to different processes. Um, so these are the basics. We've got our uh, process, we've got our documents, we've got what happens if we do something manually, our information system, a decision point, and how documents are filed away. Now what happens if something goes outside of our system? Uh, let's say we send a document to a customer, then we use something called a terminal point. So a terminal point could mean the end of a transaction or something moving outside of the organization or coming in. And our terminal points are usually just sort of oblongs like this. Uh, so let me give that a label. Uh, and sometimes that can also be described as an in or an out. Okay, so we've got our basic documents here. Let's try and uh, draw some examples on um, our next slide. Okay, now I don't really have a set example in mind. I'm just going to draw here from memory. But let's have a process where a, we need to input orders. All right, so let's say we receive an order from a customer over the phone. So we have a manual process. Oh, and uh, we also have different lines of responsibility or different, we're going to divide our page into different areas. So my first one, I'm going to start with, let's say that this is the salesperson. Um, and in the sales department, the sales department receives an order over the phone. I'm going to use a thinner pen here so we can fit this all in. But we have a manual process, all right, where we receive phone order. Make that a bit smaller so we can fit that all in here. All right. So someone receives the order over the phone. Then that person has to input the uh, order into the system. So we have a little thing here. Let's have input order. All right. So we've got our input order, and that order goes into some sort of computer system. So I'm going to draw my little database here, there, and we will just say database. All right. So I've got my database, my order. Uh, now, when we're inputting the order, before we can process it, let's say we have to make a decision about credit worthiness. Well, then. I need to have my little, oh, that's a terrible diamond shape. So I've got my diamond shape, and here we have to do a credit check. Well, that's not going to fit. Let's try and squeeze that in. There we go. So we've got our credit check, and if they pass the credit check, let's say yes, down here, then we can process the order. Okay, what happens if we don't pass the credit check, we have a no, then we might have a process where we have to call the customer back. So let's have here, phone customer. Okay, so we've got our order. Now what happens, um, so we process the order, that might go back into the database. So we're gonna put the order back in the database up here. Flowcharts can get a little messy, all right? So if this, you know, if flowchart doesn't work out the first time, then that's okay. Now quite often, the because of segregation of duties, 
people doing this task might, you know, the order part of the task might be in a different department. So I'm going to draw a line here which shows that this task is being done by somebody else. So let's say this is the warehouse. All right. Now, if we did something in the old fashioned way and we had a paper perhaps, then they might need to generate some order copies. Uh, and that's quite common. So we've got the main order, and I'm going to make two copies here. One, two, three of our sales order. Um, now I'm going to show you something a little bit different here. What I'm going to show you is what happens when we make copies of documents and then those documents go to different places. So let's say that the first order gets kept with the sales department filed away. Our second copy is going to go to the warehouse and our third copy is going to go to accounting, which we don't see here. So let's file away the first one. All right, the first one goes into a file and let's do that file by the sales order number, numeric. Okay, this second one here is going to go to the warehouse. So I'm going to put a little two here. Now at the warehouse side, rather than draw a line all the way here and across, I'm going to say, all right, here's a little circle. Coming in from number two is that order. All right. And what I should also do is put a little two here in the top right hand corner so that I know that that's that copy. The next step might be to select the goods. that are being sent to the customer. And then generally what happens there is you'll need to generate some sort of shipping document. Um, generate shipping notice. All right. So let's just shrink that down into my little box. All right, and let's assume that that shipping notice, so let's assume that that shipping notice here also comes from the database. Um, so I could either recreate the database just off here to the side, or as an alternative, I could draw a line back up to this one here. But I'm just going to create a new one, same thing, database. And then out of that shipping notice, the generation point, the description comes the shipping document. All right, uh, shipping notice. Okay, and generally, copies ma companies make these in, in multi copies as well. So we've got our original, our second copy, um, and then let's make a third. Now, if the first copy gets uh, sent to the customer, let's say with the actual goods, then I'm going to use one of those terminating points again the sort of oval thing, and I'm going to send that to the customer with goods. Let me try and shrink that down. All right, customer with the goods. Uh, let's say my second copy goes into a file um, by the number, and then my third copy goes to accounting. Now here, because this is on a different page, you usually use a little connector shape that says, you know, go to page two. And that would be the same here. But I'm not gonna actually go have a second page here. But you know, if you did this on a huge A3 piece of paper, you could use another one of these. Now, if the sales order, what happens to that sales order? Um, if it gets filed with the shipping notice copy, then I'm going to put a little arrow to say that that gets filed down here and they go together. So that's some examples of our flowcharts. Um, have a go, you can look at any process that you see in real life and these shapes should get you there. Um, for all my students, please make sure that uh, you've got a basic understanding of this and we'll look at this in our tutorials soon. Happy auditing everybody!